They called it the brick that never froze. No wires, no fire, no fuel. Yet it could keep a man alive through a night that would freeze a rifle bolt solid. Soldiers swore by it, engineers quietly perfected it, and decades later most of the world forgot it ever existed. But here's the thing. What worked in the bunkers and trenches of World War II can still save your skin today when the grid goes dark. Stick around, because if you're serious about survival, you'll want this old-school tech in your prepping playbook. And hey, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our deep-dive survival strategies. This is Prepper's Survival Blueprint, and we bring the field-tested truth. During World War II, surviving winter wasn't just about courage. It was about clever engineering. On the Eastern Front, temperatures regularly plunged below minus 30 degrees Celsius. Engines refused to start, machine oil turned to sludge, and men inside bunkers or trenches were running out of fuel and options. Open fires risk detection, and smoke gave away positions. The challenge was brutal. How do you stay warm when every spark could kill you? Military engineers turned to physics instead of fire. They realized that heat could be stored and released slowly, just like a battery holds electricity. Enter the heating brick. Dense, fire-resistant blocks that could absorb massive amounts of thermal energy when charged by a short burst of heat, then radiate that warmth for hours after the fire went out. These bricks weren't fancy, but they worked. Soldiers could heat them near a small stove or even beside vehicle exhaust pipes during the day, then carry them into shelters at night. The brick held on to that warmth gradually releasing it into the bunker air, keeping men and rations from freezing solid. You know, the Never Froze nickname wasn't magic. It was actually smart material science. These bricks were made of refractory clay and minerals like iron oxide and volcanic ash. That mix gave them a high specific heat capacity, which just means they could soak up a lot of heat without cracking or overheating. And when heated to a few hundred degrees Fahrenheit, they acted like a slow, steady radiator. Because they didn't rely on combustion once charged, they produced no smoke or carbon monoxide, an invisible lifesaver in airtight bunkers. The secret really lay in their density. The heavier the brick, the longer it held warmth. In well-insulated shelters, one or two large bricks could actually maintain a livable temperature all night, even when the outside air dipped far below zero. Soldiers in field hospitals and command posts used them to warm medical kits, boots, and even rations. Some units wrapped the bricks in canvas or wool to slow the heat loss even more, basically creating portable thermal batteries. Fast forward to now. Power grids fail, winter storms knock out heating systems, and fuel prices just keep climbing. But the laws of thermodynamics haven't changed since 1944. The same principle that kept soldiers alive in frozen bunkers can keep your home, cabin, or bug-out shelter warm during a blackout. So, think of it as passive heat banking. You heat a mass when energy is available, maybe with a wood stove, a propane burner, or even electric power during the day, and then just let it release that warmth overnight. Unlike electric blankets or space heaters, it doesn't need a constant power draw. And, yeah, unlike open flames, it doesn't eat up your oxygen or risk a fire. It's low-tech, but honestly, it's pretty smart. 
Modern preppers can easily adapt this, no problem. You can use fire bricks, concrete blocks, or even thick slabs of stone. The key is mass and material. The denser and more heat tolerant the block, the longer it stays warm. Some preppers even build small heat banks around stoves. Walls or boxes filled with brick or stone that soak up heat while the fire burns and radiate it for hours after. It's the same concept the soldiers used, just scaled up and refined for civilian life. You don't need military-grade materials to recreate this wartime marvel. Start with standard fire bricks or soapstone if you can find it. Both handle high heat well. Heat them up near your stove or heater during the day, then move them into your insulated shelter space before you sleep. If you want to take it further, build a thermal mass core beside your main heat source. The more weight you add, the more warmth you store. Here's where modern know-how meets old-school ingenuity. If you're heating with electricity and expecting a power cut, preheat the bricks using your oven or space heater while power is available. Wrap them in a few layers of thick fabric or place them in an insulated box to slow their heat loss. When the lights go out, that stored energy can make the difference between a cold, sleepless night and a comfortable one. In survival shelters or bug-out locations, place your heating bricks strategically, under bedding, near the center of the room, or inside metal containers that can radiate warmth evenly. Keep them away from plastic or flammable surfaces, and remember that even passive heat can cause burns if you're careless.